A sixth lesson to be learned is that the market for corporate control uh, matters a great deal to the way firms are organized and how they are managed. If executives think that they can mismanage a firm, uh, they, they can be sadly mistaken because mismanagement can translate into suppressed profit streams, which can translate into suppressed uh, stock prices. Savvy investors uh, can buy the stock at low prices, correct the management uh, problem, and, uh, and sell out at, at high prices. So the competitive uh, threat for control of corporations can discipline ma managers uh, severely. A seventh lesson to be learned is that incentives matter. Incentives are at the foundation of all trades. They explain why foreign firms are found, formed. Uh, they explain why goods are produced. They explain why pay is so often tied uh, to performance. Uh, pay for performance overcomes uh, the large group problem, the potential for shirking among uh, workers. Just as in the same manner, uh, salaries overcome the potential for shirking of among managers, because when, when firms agree to pay workers' salaries, managers must then work hard to make sure that their, their, uh, their firm is a climate in which uh, workers can earn their uh, salaries. An eighth lesson to be taken from uh, these modules and the textbook is that expectations count a great deal uh, in, in an economy. If people expect prices to go up in the future, then they will start demanding the product today. If they expect bad management to continue into the future, then the effects of that bad management can become incorporated into the price of a, of a stock. If managers expect to, uh, to uh, realize uh, network effects, then that can affect uh, their, their pricing today. Uh, for regular goods, uh, managers have an incentive to lower the price. They can sell more units of the good. For network goods, managers have two incentives to lower the price. First, they can lower the price in order to, um, uh, to sell more today. But they can lower the price even more because by, by uh, selling more today, they can build a network which can build the demand in the future, which can allow them to raise their price uh, in the future and make profits uh, in the future. The potential for profit from raising the price in the future after the network has been built is an incentive uh, for firms uh, or managers uh, to lower the price uh, today. A ninth lesson to be learned is that money uh, can be made uh, by thinking. Uh, all too often, uh, managers uh, look to their accounting statements and concentrate on the average cost of production, and many managers seem to think that they should produce the good where they minimize the average cost of production. Whereas we've tried to stress in here that you don't minimize average cost of production, you indeed try to equate at the margin. The most fundamental of all production rules is that a firm should produce where marginal cost is equal to marginal uh, revenue. I remind you that Bill Gates uh, made a fortune uh, primarily because uh, he understood uh, the market for operating systems. He understood uh, the potential for network effects uh, within the operating system market. That is, he understood that if he lowered his price uh, today or early on, uh, he could encourage people to buy uh, Windows. And when people buy Windows, application developers uh, can write uh, for Windows. And Bill Gates and Microsoft spent a great deal of time and effort trying to cultivate uh, application uh, developers. Why? Because he seemed to understand that if in fact you have a lot of applications, you have, you're going to have people uh, buying your product today and more application developers will write for the product uh, for Windows operating system tomorrow. A tenth lesson is that markets always adjust. There's an old rule that you can't fool Mother Nature and oftentimes you can't fool uh, markets. Many government officials think that all they need to do is, is uh, proclaim a minimum wage uh, for uh, workers. And they can assume, or they do assume, uh, that such a proclamation will mean that the covered workers are better off. We pointed out in here that such wage rates can indeed uh, undercut the employment opportunities of workers. 
Moreover, we have stressed how an increase in the minimum wage can, can encourage uh, producers, employers, to undercut or to cut uh, their workers' fringe benefits and to increase the work demands of their workers. The impact of the minimum wage can indeed be one of undercutting uh, the value of jobs to the covered workers. Similarly, we pointed out in our discussion of rent controls that if in fact you put a, a rent ceiling on apartments, uh, you not only will cut back on the number of apartments available, but you will encourage landlords to undercut the quality of their apartments. And it is questionable whether or not uh, the tenants will in the end uh, be in any better off because they might pay lower rents, but they can also incur uh, greater maintenance costs and get lower quality uh, apartments. In closing, I want to, I want to say thank you uh, for using microeconomics uh, for MBAs. Dwight Lee and I ha have enjoyed a great deal developing uh, your textbook solely for MBA instruction, and we've also uh, uh, enjoyed greatly uh, developing uh, these modules. We hope they have been very useful to you. Thank you very much for listening to me.